Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, January 16th, 2013. Our top story is news from the world of medicine, with an always exciting update from the field of HIV research. A team of Spanish researchers has developed a therapeutic vaccine that targets the HIV virus. This is different from most conventional vaccines in that it attempts to treat a disease rather than prevent it. Obviously, a vaccine for preventing HIV transmission is also being heavily researched, but the results of this therapeutic vaccine are extremely promising. Not only did this vaccine have a unique function, it was also created in a unique way. Instead of using a dead or weakened virus, they used immune system cells that had been exposed to HIV and then killed. Essentially, exposing people's immune systems to these cells trained them how to fight the virus. Now, spoiler alert. The effects of the therapeutic vaccine were only temporary, but still, extremely encouraging. Twelve weeks into the trial, 12 of the 22 people given the real treatment saw a 90% drop in detectable viral load. 24 weeks in, only about seven people still had this reduction, with none given the placebo seeing similar results. And after about a year, all the patients involved had to return to their usual regimen of medication. Still, this trial is being seen as a huge success, being the first real proof that therapeutic vaccines could work. As development continues, these vaccines may become a stage in a total cure for HIV infection. Next is news from the world of biotechnology. A scientist working over at the Sandia National Laboratory has been studying cyanobacteria for their biofuel production potential. Now here on Brainstorm, we talk a lot about biofuel research. We get particularly giddy when the research involves microorganisms as opposed to crops, because corn and similar feedstocks use up valuable agricultural land. Hopefully you're not getting tired of this kind of news because it's extremely important and we won't stop covering it anytime soon. This latest work also has some unique characteristics for algae biofuel research. Firstly, as previously mentioned, this scientist studied cyanobacteria, whereas much research has studied eukaryotic algae. These cyanobacteria have several advantages over eukaryotic algae. They're much easier to genetically engineer and are capable of excreting the fuel precursors, whereas eukaryotic algae needs to be harvested and then precursors extracted from the dried biomass. Not having to constantly grow new batches of microorganisms could potentially save a lot of phosphate, nitrogen, and a hell of a lot of money. In this research, certain strains of cyanobacteria were engineered to produce and excrete free fatty acids. Currently, production levels wouldn't be viable to mass-produce fuel from the cyanobacteria. Which brings us to the second main difference of this research. While it did involve creating these fuel-producing strains, the main focus was studying the underlying biology behind the engineered pathways. The fatty acid production seems to interfere with the normal growth and development of the cyanobacteria. The scientist thinks it's likely the unsaturated fatty acids interfering with normal cell membrane functioning. By studying how the engineered genes affect other genes and systems within the organism, it could lead to higher biofuel yields, working to better understand the natural systems of the cyanobacteria rather than just taking a brute force approach to the metabolic engineering. We end with a quick story from the world of technology. Researchers from China and the Georgia Institute of Technology have created a record-breaking nanogenerator, which, as you may have guessed, is a tiny device capable of generating an admittedly tiny amount of power. This particular device consists of an array of nanowires with electrodes at each end. Thanks to the piezoelectric effect, pressure or deforming the array generates an electric current that can power devices. It can be activated with a simple finger press and doesn't require a power storage component to work. Tests involving dropping a relatively light object from various heights yielded a peak output of 209 volts and 53 microamps. That's nearly triple the output of a previous record holding nanogenerator, enough power to turn on a standard 1.9 volt LED. It can also generate enough current to activate the sciatic nerve of a frog, which is the creepy ass video you're watching right now. However, this test shows that this new device could have biomedical applications. There are a number of other systems that could potentially be self-powered in a sense. Small electronics or sensors powered by everyday physical interactions. The team is hoping their nanogenerator will be implemented in connecting more devices to the internet, but they will obviously continue to improve the technology. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.